This is a sculpture I will title Autumn Moon. Hopefully it is the first one of many in a sculpture series I will create inspired by the seasons. I have this birch log I will be using for this project. I am hoping for some spalting in it, which means fungi has changed the color of it and given it more character. After inspecting the log on the outside it seems solid, but trying a birch log with a bark on can trap moisture in it for too long. I am already seeing signs of the spalting process having gone too far. I will need to remove the rest of the bark to get a closer look. When the wood becomes like this it is pretty much unusable. Perhaps you could do something with resin, but I like to finish my projects using oil. I made a cut deeper into the log to hopefully reveal some better wood, but it seemed like the soft part of the wood went straight through the log. Time to admit defeat, the birch log had to be discarded. Fortunately I have two walnut logs available, so I switched over to one of those instead. I am very familiar with walnut logs since I worked exclusively with them this year, but they are still very different to each other on the inside, so it's always a treat to get a look at how the colors are. This one kind of reminds me of the color the Amodio sculpture I made had. A lot of bright golden areas with some very dark lines. It might have been my favorite walnut log so far. I will start by making some cuts so that I can safely clamp the log onto my draw horse. For most of my sculptures I drill a hole and attach an extra piece of wood, but the part of the log I am cutting here is outside of the sculpting area. I'm always a little nervous before I start off with the sculpture, but it's a part of the game, I guess. And here are two side profiles of the fox. As you can see, the limbs correspond to each side. I copied the original design, flipped it in Photoshop and made an edit out of it. These worked great as references for this project. And if you want to support me, a good way to do so is to subscribe. And to my new subscribers, I want to say welcome and thank you so much for the support. My goal is to bring you unique designs in each video I create. Or actually, my main goal is to turn this thing into a living, but I have to say that all the nice comments I get through my journey really gives me the motivation to go through with designs that I feel are beyond what I am capable of. I also want to address the exhibition I was going to have at the end of this year. The plan has changed and I will be doing the exhibition in spring next year. I will let you know once I find a venue that can host my exhibition, hopefully I will have that sorted out before this year ends. Time to start carving away some wood. In the beginning I tried to find the correct ratio between the thickness, height and length of the subject matter. If one of these are off it will produce a pretty bad result. I often stop to assess the process. With wood carving it all comes down to not removing too much too early. For me it works best to discover the overall shape before I focus more on one particular area. And I deliberately vary my designs a lot to improve my skills. But certain elements have similarities and I have to say that it feels great to discover that knowledge I have acquired in previous products is useful for what I'm working on at the moment. So I have come quite far with the fox and it's time to work on the head. And the reason why I do the head as early as now is because uh, it's a critical part for the sculpture and I really want to you know, get it out of the way so that I can focus more on the rest of the sculpture. Basically what I just tried to say was that having difficult tasks ahead of me and not addressing them can occupy too much space in my head. It goes so far that I will think about it even outside of the workshop. That is why I figured out that it is best to just go ahead and get it out of the way as soon as possible. And just a fun side note, when I posted the design of this sculpture online, some people suggested it looked like a pig and not a fox. Perhaps I can understand that argument since the fox in the design was a bit too wide and also maybe the ears had some kind of pig vibes to them. So now when I'm carving the head I'm trying my best to make sure it looks like a fox. And I hope that you agree with me that it does look more like a fox than a pig right now. Hopefully. <laughs> And here is something that might become a problem later. The bottom of the head seemed too flat and I'm not sure if I have enough wiggle room to add the dimension it needs to flow seamlessly together with the rest of the head. Maybe if I move the lips up a little bit to free up space I can find a solution. I'm going to portray the general shape of the paws and not go too detailed with them. Since this is a young fox the paws will be a little bit oversized to emphasize that. 
It is important for me to get the right angle where the feet connect to the surface, since this will play a huge part in how dynamic the sculpture eventually will end up looking. Having the sculpture sit at an angle like this is one of many things I randomly discover as I make a design. If I remember correctly, I visualized it this way, way before I started sketching, and when I saw how the sketch ended up looking, I felt very sure that this was the design I had to go through with. I often make designs and think, wow, this is gold. I got to turn this into a carving. But the next day, I explore some kind of other design, and all of a sudden, that is the one I decide to go for. Maybe as a season finale this year, I can gather up all the discarded designs in my sketchbook and run a poll online and turn the most liked design into a carving. The sculpture always becomes different than the design. This is something I like a lot. It keeps the process fun, but I would like to mention that even with a very detailed side top and front facing sketch, it would still be a challenge. Also, sometimes a design can look perfect, but the shading in it can be deceiving. Alright, so here is how the sculpture is looking right now. And uh, to be honest, I like this side the most, mostly because of the uh, you know flow of the leaves. They are kind of going like this. I'm a little bit uh, unsure if I should make the tail here a little bit thinner, but at the same time, I kind of like the you know strong feeling of it as this right now. Time to portray the wind flowing between the leaves I just carved. The decision to add wind and leaves to this design came from the idea that I wanted it to be inspired by autumn. Summer for most animals is a time of plenty, but when autumn arrives, food might get more scarce and more unsure times are ahead. I wanted to capture this in the movement of the fox, trying to make it look as if it is a little bit concerned and making cautious steps ahead. Finding references for carving the details on the leaves was not much of a problem. The leaf you just saw came from a birch tree, which is the type of tree the discarded log came from. It was a shame really that the spalting had gone too far. I would have really liked to see how a design like this would end up in those colors. If my future exhibition becomes a success and I get to sell some of my creations, investing in new types of wood will be one of the first things I do. I am trying very hard to make each sculpture unique to each other, and with more types of wood to choose from, this would be easier to accomplish. I think there are four natural holes like this in the sculpture, stemming from the center of the log itself or branches. The decision to leave them as they are, or fix them, comes down to structural integrity and whether they look out of place or not. In this case, I felt like it checked both those boxes, so I went ahead and filled it with a piece of walnut having about the same color as its surroundings. My plan for my next sculpture is to make some kind of hawk looking bird. I want to give it a unique presentation, and I thought a good idea would be to have it on its back, with the wings going upwards at an angle. Here are two different drafts I came up with. I talked a little bit in my previous video about how intuition has helped me more lately as I carve. And this was particularly true for the fox's eyes. Often when I want to go for a certain expression, I try to replicate it with my own face first. I also do this for other parts of the carving, like the movement in the limbs and such. And even before I start sketching something, I play around with the pose, using myself as a model. I can even do this when I figure out a pose for a bird. Uh, <laughs> it looks a bit silly, but it really bridges the gap between what I imagine and what I'm able to put down on paper. Alright, this is my not so genius plan to get the hole at a 90 degree angle. It would probably work better if I had secured a block to the sculpture, but without leaving huge dents from the clamps, I could not see how I would be able to do that. The holes ended up becoming fairly straight, but it was a messy process. Since the iron rods will be quite short for this sculpture, the problem of having them a little bit off is not going to become much of an issue. I am getting close to the finishing stage, and it's time to decide how the base should look. I found out that having a portion of the sculpture go outside of the base would be the best, especially for the side where the leaf is. And this block will only serve its purpose as a way to present my work at my exhibitions. When I have what I need, I will upgrade it to some solid walnut with dark colors. When I was marking up the holes, I accidentally made it 3cm from the center on the left side, instead of 2, which it was supposed to be. This would have been really bad if I had been working on some high quality walnut block instead. I just quickly want to shout out my shop that I linked in the description. I'm selling handmade wooden pendants over there. I'm not restocking that often since my focus has shifted even more towards making these sculptures. But it is a way for me to finance this journey. For my next video I will try my best to make 3 miniature designs of the sculpture I am making and putting it on my website as free templates. 
It would be an honor to me if someone decided to make something out of those templates I plan to create. Oh, and the reason I postponed the exhibition is because I want to free up more time to create, which gives me a lot of meaning at the moment. I am very happy with how the base and the sculpture came together. I would argue that the base became absolutely perfect. Uh, wait, what? Uh, please don't look. It's uh, it's not what it looks like. I... Time's giving 50 hours of hand sanding and the sculpture is now ready to have the oil applied. Thank you to those who stuck around for the entire video. So it was pretty unfortunate that I wasn't able to use this birch log for this project, but since some parts of it are still usable, I can maybe turn some caps out of it or something. But Autumn 1 is now finished, I want to thank my Patreon so much for the support. Here is the result, and I hope to see you in my next video.